Welcome back everybody. In this video we'll be looking at Take It Racing 2, but more specifically how you can create a point and click game and also set up settings in your game in order to control the cursor speed. So to begin, obviously you'll need to have your scene set up as point and click. You'll need to have, you know, the artwork ready for, you know, what the settings screen will look like. And I'll show you my uh, background scene so you can get ideas. As you can see, there's a color aspect, but that will probably be in a future episode. Basically, you just want to think about how you want your game to actually look like and act like. Obviously, this is remade from Take It Racing 2 in GB Studio 2. So I basically just recreated what I had there. So in my game, I'm basically going in between screens. Um, and as you can see, we just press the back button to go back. You know, there's save icon that saves. Um, there's a button up here that tells you how much money you have. It's not set up correctly yet. Um, we can also go back to the main menu from here. Uh, and basically, obviously the idea is once we click through these, it will take us to other screens, almost exactly like this, where we click on stuff. So the cursor speed is quite important. And I didn't do this in Ticket Racing 2 in GB Studio 2 for some reason, but it's very easy to set up to have basically triggers that uh, set your speed and then um, set this location of this uh, icon as well. Uh, so then you can actually control the speed. Uh, and it even works if you save it when you obviously load back in, the speed will be the same. And obviously so will this slider be in the same position. So if I take you into the project here, you can start to see how I made this happen. So just like I said, I have triggers that if we click on them, they set the cursor speed. Um, and this is a value of a global variable which can be saved and then referenced later. Um, and obviously each one is, this one is one and then two, three, four, five, and then six on the end. And basically I'm just setting the player movement speed to that number um, after that. And then we're just setting the location of this slider icon to this trigger. And it's basically as simple as that, but there are some more complexities that you will need to do in order to make it, you know, work seamlessly um, with everything else. So once you have each trigger set up like that, uh, and the genius thing about GB Studio 3 is that the pixels per frame can, I don't even know what the maximum is, but okay, it looks like 10. I can even try. Yeah, the maximum is 10. So 10 pixels per frame. I haven't tried that, but I think it would be almost unwieldy in a way that it moves too fast. Um, but obviously I found that six, was the like highest I could get before it uh, became too much. Um, and so I've put that as the maximum for my game. And then the, the minimum is one. You can also have half, which is extremely slow and I didn't think it was necessary. Um, so I split it up into six. Uh, and then if we take a look at this slider, we can look, we see we've disabled the collisions and this is because we don't actually wanna click on the slider. We wanna click on the triggers behind them, behind it. We then have a switch and obviously there are six options and it's all based on the cursor speed variable which we obviously set by clicking and basically when this scene is initiated so when this actor is you know begins and is created in the scene it sets its position to the correct position based on which number it is uh, and obviously at the very beginning of my game um actually it's in i think it's a new game setup is it yeah we set the cursor speed to two and also the player movement speed to two um, and that means when the player creates a new game they have a decent speed and we also set the value for that specifically which is quite important um, making sure that this value is set before the player enters this scene is important because otherwise the slider will be sat here waiting for it to be given you know one of the values and some other things about having cursors in a point and click game is that you can set the animation type to cursor, okay? And obviously in GB Studio 2 and GB Studio 1, all you had to do was have a two frame sprite and it would automatically, you know, work on the hover and the idle, which is what it's called now here. Um, so the idle is obviously what your mouse normally looks like. 
And then when you hover, hover, hover over something, it turns into this uh, more circular one, just like on a, on a normal Windows device or whatever, it turns from a, an arrow into a hand, okay? Uh, so obviously mine is themed towards ticket racing, and so this is it. And I've also been quite, quite um, experimental and I've added the bounding box, or I shrunk the bounding box, sorry, um, or the collision box, and I've also moved it up so it's more at the tip of the cursor so that you it feels like you're clicking on the point rather than you know the left the right whatever it was maybe referring to before uh, and by shrinking it down to be less like the width is less than or almost equal to the cursor size it means that we can you know it feels better for the player when it was exactly 16 16 um for example, this here, obviously there is one gap between, but when you when you go across it, it doesn't actually turn into the hover mode, but because of this new thing, it's almost definite that you know what you're clicking on. Before, um, because of the size of the box, I don't think GB Studio knew what you wanted to click on. Um, so I recommend uh, making sure that your cursor sprite is you know shrunk down slightly and focused on the point of click. And if you've never made a point and click game before, this is how I, I'm setting up mine. I just have trigger boxes um, and they just send me to different scenes. Obviously, for example, this one adds money and then does the calculations to make this display correctly. Um, and obviously not everything has to ch change scene or change a value. It can be just text that um, you know tells you something like the question marks will be in the end. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're thinking about making a point and click game, I hope this has you know shed some light on it. And obviously, if you're making a point and click game, having these settings where you can change the cursor speed probably will help your players enjoy your game a lot more. Before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. You'll be up on the screen right now. Thank you very much to you guys, especially the new ones. Remember to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought of this video and what you'd want to see in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.